uh, how do we know? The questions that we need to ask is how do we know we, as a person that work in a lab, we are safe? In what situation? Is there a measurement of whether I'm safe in this environment or not? Okay. The answer is yes, there is a way to do that. Okay, so internationally, the NIOS has set up uh, what we call the PLTWA standards. So what is PLTWA standards? Maybe some of you already know or already see this you know, term terminology in the STS, safety data sheets, right? Um, I'm not sure whether any one of you know in which section of your STS it will tell you what what is the PLTWA of that specific chemicals? Anyone, if you can answer in the chat box, right? Anyone know in which segment or section of the SCA you can find this information, right? Uh, PLTWA of the specific chemicals, right? So let's uh, please, please answer your questions, right? So PLTWA stands for permissible exposure limit. Uh, basically, it basically says that there is a certain, amount, uh, a certain concentration of these particular chemicals that uh, at the level that below that we are safe and above that we are not safe. All right. So it's very crucial. They've done a lot of research and then they, they actually set these limits. Example, maybe um, methanol. Methanol can cause blindness, right? So um, the, S, the SES uh, actually says that the PL for methanol is 250 ppm. So below 250, you are safe. Above 250, you are not safe. Then what is TWA? TWA means time weighted average. Basically means for chemicals like methanol, basically means you are the, the limit is set according to eight hours, five working days per week. So which means within the eight hours, you're exposed to more than 250 ppm and above. You are putting yourself in a high risk, all right? So that is very important. Of course, you may say that different people have different susceptible to various type of chemicals. So always protect yourself. That is the message, of course. So in Malaysia, so um, I think the practitioners here will know this is the uh, regulation that we use in Malaysia uh, for CHRA, for Hygiene Tech 1, Hygiene Tech 2, which is the use uh, regulations, use and standard of exposure of chemical hazardous to health, right? So these are, this is the, 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 the regulation that we use in Malaysia uh, to regulate um, uh, the factories, the laboratory, and etc. Right. So especially in this regulation, in Schedule 1, you will find a list of a PEL level that, uh, you know, uh, the amount of chemical that you should expose or not, right, uh, the, the level that is safe, right. So actually, we can also classify chemicals to two groups. The first group is the long-term dangerous concentration. This is long-term effect. So we call this a chronic effect. OK, because you can already see the impact on it, maybe after a few years or maybe 10 years, etc. So for this group of chemicals, uh, the PL is stand for uh, TWA is for eight hours. There's a limit that you shouldn't be ex uh, exceeded that limit. OK, then we have another group, which is the immediate dangerous concentration. This group are most uh, are those chemicals that are very toxic, example like mercury uh, or maybe uh, for muddy height. These types of uh, chemicals, they will have a short-term exposure limits. It's not PL, they have the, the, the terminal, terminology used here is the short-term exposure limit. And the time is not 8 hours, it's 15 minutes. I would say that most of the time, this group of, this group of chemicals, which is toxic, it will create acute effect. This group of chemicals, most of the time, the lab will handle it with care. So, which means you already have uh, the system in place, the engineering control, the PPE in place to protect you. What most people ignore or didn't away is the long-term dangerous concentration because we think that, you know, methanol, uh, ethanol, is, we are so used to these chemicals, so we just ignore or, you know, we just think that, you know, we are numb to it, so it's fine. But it's not fine, right? We need to know. So I'm trying to compile a list of the commonly used chemicals to share with you and their PLTWA at hours 
and their short-term exposure limit 15 minutes, the, the concentrations, and also their impacts, health impact for, for these, uh, these, these chemicals. The information I got, I get is from SCGIH, uh, which is the latest publications uh, from US uh, Industrial Hygienist uh, Associations, right? So uh, example, like Exaton, the PLTWA level, which is eight hours, you shouldn't expose more than 250 ppm. And for SEL, for 50 minutes, you shouldn't expose more than 500 ppm. So there is like 50 minutes standards and also eight hour standards. So if both of them, you shouldn't exit, right? I think that is a clear cut, right? They're giving you a clear indications right, to protect yourself. And um, so you can see at the side, this is carcinogenic A4, so it's still okay. Uh, and it's an upper res respiratory tract and eye irritations, right? So I want you, I want to highlight a few things, right? Look at formaldehyde. If you can see the list, look at formaldehyde, all right? Formaldehyde, uh, the PL is 0 0.1 ppm. If you compare with acetone 250, you, you, will, you will find that the level is very low, right? PL for formaldehyde is 0 0.1 ppm. The lower the PLTWA, the more more toxic the chemical is. The higher, the safer, right? So um, I also have a STL standards, which is 0 0.3 ppm, also very low. So which means within 15 minutes, you shouldn't expose more than 0.3 ppm. What I want to highlight to you for formaldehyde is the notations. You see uh, there's a casinogenic A1. Casinogenic A1 means that it's a confirmed human carcinogenic, cancer-causing agent, right? So that's why we need to handle with care uh, when we deal with formaldehyde, right? So um, another two chemicals I want to highlight to you, which is commonly used laboratory and also in both uh, lab and also in uh, private industries, is the chloroform and taurine. Uh, you can look at from this, this list, of chloroform and taurine. Um, both uh, respectively 10 ppm and 20 ppm, the PL. I want you to look at the health effect, okay? Uh, especially ladies, I want you to look at the health effect for chloroform and taurine. What do you see, okay? For chloroform and taurine, what do you see? Uh, you will see that for chloroform, this actually very obviously says that embryo damage. And for taurine, straightforward, female reproduction issues, pregnancy loss. So if we do not have this awareness, so we were taught that chloroform is normally commonly used in the lab and taurine is using in the industry as a solvent, uh, you know. So uh, if you do not have this awareness, you are putting yourself in risk, all right? So how do we know um, we, are, we have exceeded the limits, all right? So in that case, um, most of the time, the CHIA will recommend you to go through a CEM. CEM means Chemical Exposure Monitoring, all right? So it's conducted by the Hygiene Tech 1 technicians. So basically, uh, the Hygiene Tech 1 will ask you to wear a pump for eight hours, and they, they will have a sampling tube to collect the, you know, the chemicals that you are exposed to within that eight hours and they will send to lab to run the test and provide you with the report. And from that report, you will know whether you are below or above the, P, the, the PLTWA, right? This is how we do, um, you know, we measure uh, your safety, right? So what will happen, you may ask, what will happen if, if I found that, uh, you know, my employer found that uh, I'm exposed more than the, P, the PL? Most likely, you will, they will do some changes. They should do some changes. For example, they may need you to do a medical checkup for every six months, and etc. Just now, we talk about PLTWA for individual chemicals, but laboratory, we use multiple chemicals, right? So one day, you may use up to more, maybe more than five or six or maybe more chemicals. So how do we know we are safe when we use more than one chemical. Is there a measurement or, or a standards that tell us we are safe, right? So why we are concerning about when you use more than one chemicals? Because example, you have chemical A with high 
PEL TWA. As you know, just like I said, the lower the PL, the more toxic the chemicals. So chemical A is less toxic because it has high PEL TWA. Chemical B has high toxic as well, uh, high PEL TWA as well, not that toxic. But who knows when the chemical A and chemical B, the vapor uh, react or mix together in the lab when you use multiple chemicals. The mixture of these two chemicals or more than two, you, it will have a low PLTWA, but no one knows what will be the impact because that is too much for a scientist to discover. Okay, uh, to tell you the, the fact is when you have two chemicals react, you are putting yourself in the risk. We call that a cocktail effect, right? But, ten, uh, but uh, fortunately, there is a standard uh, for us to, um, you know, to refer to when we use more than one type of chemicals. When you use more than one type of chemicals, um, the international standard says that you shouldn't expose to more than maximum 1% of the all the PL of those chemicals. All right, example, you are using acetone, formaldehyde, uh, taurine, chloroform. So each of these uh, PL, 1% of each of these PPL, you add up, that is the maximum you can expose to. If you are exposed to more than that, you are posting yourself in a race. So in general term, it's 100 times below each uh, PLTWA. Okay? So how do we achieve this to make, to protect ourselves? It's by means of just now, the hierarchy control. You can either use PPE, of course, the better way is engineering control system. And that brings us to the engineering control system that we are going to talk about um, today. Um, you know why I need to go through that, you know, PL, explain to you, because that is a concept we need to know, right, for any laboratory workers. PL is important. We don't put it into SDS, put it into file and forget about it. We need to refer to that. And in SDS, you go to section number eight, you will see PL, TWA, sometimes they call it the TLV, threshold uh, limit value. It's the same, all right? So 